Really nice, cozy late night run. And the lovely new hop. <laughs> that I'm sure you guys are loving at the moment. <laughs> yes, if you, if you like Multi's jumping sound, you will get to hear lots of it for the next hour. So, <laughs> All right, I think we are all good to start. I, just, I guess as a quick heads up, I am Headstrong. I am doing the run, and my commentator is Is Bullets. Howdy, um, howdy. And yeah, I suppose we will get started. So three, two, one, go. Excitement. <laughs> uh, if you wanted to go over like the story aspects of the game for people, while we're I, doing you know, the intro, I'll do be my cool. best. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're multi who is taking his one vacation day off for the year, I believe. Um, and unfortunately, we're being called into work anyways to uh, deal with some important issues that are happening uh, around Peaceful Plaza. So we are back on the job again to deliver some important mail to bring power back to this sort of main central hub of the game. So you'll see each of these cannons that are centered around or different areas we can go to. We need to complete the levels to get different power cells to eventually reach the final area. Uh, but for now, this is the tutorial section uh, where Batty's gonna teach us the basics of the game and we're gonna ignore quite a bit of it, as yeah. you'll see in just a second. But um, the main form of movement, as you'll see here, is chaining these jumps together. Uh, as you hit the ground, you can do a dash and when you jump, you get to preserve that momentum. So it's kind of this almost like dolphin movement. And you see here, we did a couple of skips already for the tutorial, avoiding those boxes there and avoiding some dialogue from Batty by jumping down. So already, while I'm trying to explain just the basics <laughs> of the movement, we're already doing some skips and some little bit of tech here. So. Who needs tutorials? I mean, tutorials are just, <laughs> they're just there to slow you down. So let's just go around them instead. So the reset codes we just got there are what's going to allow us to uh, go to each of these cannons and reset the uh, the outages that are happening and get the power cells back. So we're just starting off with the, the first area here. First level is pretty fake, so that we'll be going to nothing too complicated, just kind of taking the, the simple stuff we've learned and uh, moving on with it. Uh, do you want to talk about Speed Glitch a little bit? Yeah. Since you know it a lot, a lot better so, than I do. <laughs> so Speed Glitch is kind of like the main tech for this game. Um, at the start of every level, if you hold the dash button and the jump button as multi, the character here is entering into the entering into the ground, it allows you to preserve the momentum weirdly to allow you to go very fast compared to usual. And that'll be heavily abused, hopefully at the beginning of every single level. Yep, so kind of have to account for that extra speed and try to change those jumps together and really keep the momentum forward, so. Yeah, Each and keeping, keeping the momentum is a bit awkward because it's like, it's a very small window to continue the speed glitch once you've had it started. So it's, it's just a small window to just kind of pay attention to, otherwise you'll drop it. But there you go, that is the first level done. That's the first power cell that we need of the bunch. Be getting 30 during the run uh, before we get to the ending sequence. So, um, plenty more levels. Each of these areas are kind of themed differently. So, we have uh, Charmy Farm here that'll, uh, that we've just completed, um, and we'll be doing a few more levels there as well. Um, this next level we have coming up is one of the dashing levels uh, that most of the areas have one of these in it. Um, where you'll see just a bunch of boost pads are all along the course, and there's a little bit less of a focus on the the dashing and jumping. Though we'll still be doing it here, um, and more just kind of taking the right lines, and a little bit a little bit more laid back uh, compared to some of the, the other more uh, vertical, I guess, progression of other levels. Um, I think this might be a good time to, to squeeze in a donation or talk about any incentives if you have a moment or anything yeah. you've got. Certainly. And in, in reference to the last run, we have Echo Six Charlie donating $100. They say, what is best in life? To go left and right, 
to make good jumps and to prevent cancer. <laughs> Thank you, Echo Six Charlie. Appreciate that. Thank you very much for your donations. And do I have time for two more quick ones? Sure. Uh, two quick ones, yeah. Thank you, Iron Oxide1527, for your $250 donation. Wow. They say love watching this every year. Wow. And another $250 donation from Nils. They say big fans of Games Done Quick. Keep going. Less than three. Heart right back at you. Thank you very much for both of those. Yeah, that was a nice very donation. Kind. Very kind. Yeah. All right. So we have Carrot Ranch here, um, which is one of the tougher levels in this area and also has a pretty large uh, sequence break in it that we'll be trying to do here. Definitely one of the more infamous parts of the run. <laughs> yeah, this is when you're learning the game, this is the first level you get to where you really got to grind it out. So. Big, long level, bunch of stuff going on with it. <laughs> and you can do a precise jump right next to that windmill with a bunch of, a little bit of weird collision there. Um, and if you jump at just the right time as you're falling off, you're able to basically circumvent most of the level. And you can see there with the gold time that's showing, they're expecting you to, to finish it in around 45 seconds if you're doing it quickly. Uh, we finished it in 15 seconds, so very fast. And very well done first try. It's not easy to do at all. It takes a decent bit of practice to get that down. Yeah, it's definitely, get the there for it. definitely a really sketchy jump. You have to jump like after Multi has left the actual ground. So it's yeah, like... Yeah, a little bit of, little bit of coyote time with that to, to make it happen. So. Also coming right. up here is our first entrance of Phuket, who is our kind of like the villain of the story for the most part. Um, he's here to steal our power away so that we can't have power. They are taking it all for themselves. And he is a lovely uh, pirate turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he comes by every once in a while and kind of interrupts things and you have to go deal with them by uh, getting on top of the ship and uh, fighting them there. So there'll be these little interruptions every time we get to a certain uh, certain power cell count he'll pop up and increasingly uh start to give more and more uh, different stuff going on up here right now as you can see the uh the arena's pretty pretty bare and there's not a lot going on so uh this fight's going to be fairly simple compared to future ones but it's just kind of introducing you to him and um, his poor choices in ship design where the three power things are very plainly marked with red buttons and very easily accessible to a mole. I guess he's in the air, so he thought it was safe, but... Yeah, of course. He's also going to an area that has a bunch of cannons sitting around it, so I don't, you know, potentially, maybe not best decision, oh, yeah. but... That's also, I mean, to be fair, it's a weird decision on the city's part to have cannons as, like, your transportation to places anyway. <laughs> This place is called Peaceful Plaza, and it is armed with anti-air <laughs> cannons everywhere, so, you know, maybe that is a little unexpected. So, Mare is thanking us. The Mare is the owl, by the way. <laughs> We've not really talked too much yeah. about the characters, but... Um, but after we've gotten a certain amount of power cells, um, we'll be unlocking different cannons. So we have the ruins here that's just unlocked. We'll be doing the levels here. The routing for it's... Uh, which levels we go to is usually which ones are, are kind of the most convenient in the areas because the game does kind of move you around a decent bit to do the Phuket fights or when cutscenes happen it'll teleport you so sometimes it'll be close to, to cannons because of that. So this level showcases something that'll happen uh, or pop up in other levels which is these different keys you have to collect um, to open doors. So once we collect all five of these keys uh, it'll let us out to the end. It's, we've not found a way yet to be able to circumvent that door without getting all the keys, but hey. These are pretty you, quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. But hey, if you want to you wanna try to find something in the game, you know, the game looks fun. <laughs> give it a go. Try and skip a few key doors. That'd be cool. Yeah. Find some cheeky skips. Um... Do you remember the when exactly this game released? I'm trying to remember the top of my head. I can actually. Oh pull gosh, it up. yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. Quiz. <laughs> when was Mail Mole released? Um, oh yeah, after every every intro level, you also get a bunch of unlocked cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Uh, you get three cosmetics every time, but you don't actually get them immediately. You have to go over and talk to our buddy Rick in the corner in order to put them on and whatnot to change Multi's outfit. It was early 2021. That feels like forever ago. That's why it was confusing me. There was a demo out for for a little bit that we also speeder in that uh, had kind of the first few first few levels and then a little sprinkling of other ones. So it's been around for a little bit. We've got this level where you're supposed to you're supposed to be kind of gated by the uh, wheels that are there and have to ride along with them. But with enough speed and timing your jumps correctly, you really can just skip them um, and and just use the upper platforms to your advantage for this level and finish it Yeah, we even, we even use like a hidden thing that's supposed to be like to, to get a secondary collectible, which are the radishes, in order to the, go through even quicker. <laughs> there are different categories where you, you do collect all the radishes and, and more of a completionist sort of category. So there's a lot of different uh, ways to run it. So we're just showing off the fastest um, kind of way. The, the more bare bones, <laughs> you know. Down right. the mines is next. This level is level that I personally struggle with a lot, but you make it look a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely one of the harder levels to keep speed glitch due to a giant drop right at the start. <laughs> A big spiky thing following after us this entire time. Uh, and you are kind of, uh, the camera is not your friend with this for a lot of it, not being able to see what's going on ahead. I There's dropped boxes, it right especially. at the box. <laughs> this version especially, you have to kind of have a good mental map of, of where the jumps are gonna be and time out your jumps a little bit. Uh, otherwise you can fall in the water pretty easily. You can also sneak into the, the uh, the mailbox there, because the it's more of a line that you have to cross rather than uh, getting close to the mailbox. So if you just cross that line, it'll snap you over to it and save you a little bit of time. But yeah, there you go. Another level down, we're just kind of going through these pretty quickly. There's a decent amount of levels, but we're able to, to get through them pretty quickly, whether it's just playing the levels normally but very quickly, or some of the uh, skips we've been seeing as we've been going on. So already six power cells out of the 30 we need. Unlock the third area here. Yeah, they like to uh, pull you around a lot at the start here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with each of the cannons we're unlocking, it'll, like you said, just pull you, pull you over here. And then because we're already here, we might as well do them. So we've got a couple cannons that we've not finished all the levels on but it's just more optimal to go to the level it's taken us to, so. All right, so this is the first level of Coconut Island. We're able to um, butt stomp the uh, inflatable there to skip a lot of it. Um, you're supposed to put the balls in the hoops there, but instead we can dash across there and circumvent that little puzzle and get our way to the end. And again, do the glitch with the mailbox there to- Yeah, we were nowhere near really there. Bit. <laughs> get vaguely close to it and cross that line, it'll snap you over to it. It's, it's all those small little optimizations all come together for stuff. This game, it's a lot of like really getting comfortable with a lot of this stuff, getting comfortable with how much you can push it and the lines you can take and just really grinding down that muscle memory for stuff. So all this is being made to look really easy, but these are like, each of these levels like take a decent amount, even the simple ones like take a decent amount of getting down to, to save those fractions of a second. So, get yeah, down to beach next. Yeah, and there's also, there's really not any RNG in this run at all. It's just very cycle based. So just how well you play will just determine where you end up in the cycles and knowing how to deal with each one. We're again gonna use one of these inflatables to our advantage to yeah. pop ourselves up play here. safe here. I don't trust that jump right now. Yeah, if you jump on it the wrong way, it'll you'll be a little bit short for that jump, so it's better to be a little safer with it. It's still a very fast time. Again, you know, like you're seeing with all these gold times, like all of them are getting completely crushed. Like they're not like overly, overly forgiving, especially when you're going through the first time. But it's just as strong as very good at this video game. <laughs> So, no, this is, this is going really great. 
Okay, uh, the next level coming up here is called Spiky Islands. Um, you're going to be seeing a very odd glitch, very unique to Spiky Islands here, where Multi learns how to swim in the water. Uh, Multi yeah. is usually allergic to the water, can't get in the water, he'll just die. But if you do a little bit of shenanigans here with this floaty at the start, like so. Oh, we got a weird one. That'll let us uh, dash in the water here on the edge. Yeah, if you're right at that seam between the water and the waterfall there, you can keep all your speed, you can just do your dashes like normal, and you can just avoid a lot of the cycle-based stuff, intentionally taking some damage here, just because it's a little bit faster than, than waiting on that. Yeah, uh, best to just yeah. go through it. <laughs> and the last part is just getting close to the camera there and kind of squeezing by those spikes. So again, another level that's fairly cycle-based, but still able to, to break it a little bit with some, some very unique glitches to this area. The um, Cooking Island's one of the, the more fun areas, in my opinion. It's got a lot of cool stuff going on for each of the levels, and obviously the kind of the tech that's uh, exclusive to it's a lot of fun as well. Right, coming up here is the second time we will see Phuket um, after we get this lovely cannon cutscene. <laughs> Yeah, we get doubly interrupted. We get interrupted by the cannon cutscene, and then we get interrupted by Phuket. <laughs> Phuket, so a cool thing about the Phuket fights is that as we are progressing along and unlocking areas, Phuket kind of incorporates some of the stuff from, from those areas a little bit. Um, it starts adding stuff um, progressively as we're going on and getting more difficult, so. Um, but they are, they're decently shorter fights kind of uh, in between. Oops. Didn't get the dash out like I wanted. <laughs> yeah, the steps getting up to this big cannon can be a little bit tumultuous or other big, big words. <laughs> it's my one big word for the night. It's, it's like I said, it's 2.40 <laughs> That's all you're getting out of me. Yeah, so you'll see, as Bullet mentioned, there's like the spinning platforms with the spikes now, and there's a few more gaps in the, the arena, but it's the same basic premises as the last time. We're just here to hit these three buttons to shock him, and then he gets upset and runs away. Mm -hmm. This button doesn't like me. <laughs> Button's broken. You do a lot of coyote jump, or coyote time jumps and other stuff to kind of skip across those and not have to follow them along normally. Um, and then it's just timing it out so the spike balls don't don't hit you trying to sneak in before or after them. So there you go. That is the second Phuket fight. Nice and easy. Just kind of coasting through the run so far. Everything's going pretty well. The nice mayor's going to thank us again. And then we're going to get whisked away again here. So it would be nice if we could just go to that one there because we still have one more level on that cannon. But the game doesn't let us. We get yanked mm -hmm. over here to the snowy level. Also, I guess something we didn't mention too is you can enter the cannons a little earlier than you're supposed to. You can actually enter them during the black screen, which is mm -hmm. just a small little time saver. Yep. This is Yeti Ridge here. This is another one of the boosting levels. Um, so we'll be going ahead with this. Um, like I said before, these are these are pretty chill. There are some optimizations. This one has a, a fun uh, little optimization you can do at the end that's exclusive to it. There's a lot of like little sort of things like that for each of these areas, each of these levels. As we're they're introducing like new mechanics and stuff, there's also kind of fun additional speed tech that's introduced with it. So each levels is a lot of fun. There's actually a pretty decent, pretty decently large uh, group of people that have done ILs for stuff and grinding stuff out if they don't want to do full game runs or just enjoy doing ILs more. Yeah, the game, um, nice. the game has in-game in leaderboards, which a lot of people definitely would like to have. You can see here, grinding against the, uh, uh -oh. the barrier, able <laughs> to uh, get some extra speed. Though we only have one heart, so... Gotta, yeah, I got hit a little bit there. Sick. I was on a bad cycle. <laughs> there you go. So, a little bit of fun tech for a level that you wouldn't expect it on. Yeah, and it's like the simplest thing ever to do that tech. You literally just ram yourself into the wall and hold left and just let multi go. Oh, I was going to say it's like frame perfect and like you have oh, to do like, pick like, you know, 
a different input every frame and like wiggle your yeah. analog stick in a certain way. Just but, constantly yeah. wiggle the analog to keep the speed. <laughs> yes, you have to play with three controllers for that part. <laughs> Here's some, some more. more cool cosmetics, mm -hmm. yeah. So this level <laughs> is going to introduce the kind of like mechanic of the snow levels, which are these mm. blue and yellow uh, platforms that switch back and forth depending on your jump. So as you jump through the level, the platforms will switch colors, and so you kind of have to just know when one's going to switch. Yep, we, we tend to time our jumps out to manipulate them to the, the best spot for us. Um, so sometimes we'll do, since you keep your very nice jump there, very well done. You can skip across here as well. Um, so sometimes we'll do like little tiny hops to uh, to time it out correctly for us. So here uh, it is. It is technically possible to jump that yeah. without the button. It's incredibly sketchy and usually it's kind of reserved it. for <laughs> for like IL strats or like really go like you know if something goes wrong in your run or you're really getting for lower times like. You could maybe go for that again. Like we're forty seconds below, or thirty seconds below the goal time for yeah. this, just it, crushing all of them. <laughs> jumping the gap saves. I think it's like a half a second, and it's like the hardest jump in the game. <laughs> it's I've gotten it like a couple times. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not it worth it. <laughs> yeah, eleven power cells. So we are just a bit over a third of the way to getting to the end of the game, which will be a lot of fun uh, once we get to that, but no spoilers for that. I've not played it before, no spoilers. Okay, not, a, not at uh, all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's my level, it's bullets all along. Uh, again, we still have the flipping platforms before, we have a lot of the, um, bullet, uh, the bullet cannons as well, kind of chasing us as we're going through here uh, on a timer here. Oh, well, baddies are baddies in these levels. We've not talked about it yet, but uh, baddie will sell you extra hearts uh, during the levels for extremely expensive amounts of carrots. Um, oh, so, so expensive. It's 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 uh, it's a racket. Um, but yeah, so we never end up buying any of those for for any of the levels. Uh, it's but not really worth it for anything. He's there in case you're wondering why there's a bat on each of these levels. He's just. <laughs> He's just chilling. He's wait, waiting to sell us some hearts. Yeah. We ignore him the whole time, though. <laughs> Poor baddie. Yeah. Only one more level left for Giddy Ridge. Yeah, this will be the first time we actually don't get whisked away by any random cutscene, and we actually get to finish every level here. Um, there's 36 mm -hmm. total power cells in the game, and you need 30 to beat the game, so. We do clear out every cannon except for one cannon, which we never go to. <laughs> because each time you finish a cannon, you unlock a special race where you race against these mecha moles um, in one of the levels that you played through before. So each level, there's only four levels for each area, but there's also an additional race afterwards. And you might be doing the math and it's like, well, if they're, you know, yeah, with all the cannons there are, it's only 35. There's an extra power cell you can only get after you beat the game. So really, we're only skipping five of the yeah. uh, the power cells in the end because it's impossible to get one before you beat the game. Um, but yeah, this is the last Giddy Ridge level. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging just platform-wise, dealing with these keys right here, trying to um, manipulate the platform so that you're jumping onto, you're trying to get the keys as quickly as possible but not jumping and then falling into nothing, which is very easy for your like brain wires to get crossed up. And then just messing with like kind of the, the doubled cycles here of the cannons and the platforms at the same time. So there's a lot to keep track of. Once you kind of know the cycles of it and are comfortable with it, you can kind of schmoove through it a little bit. So make yeah, it look easy. <laughs> those ending platforms can trick you up very easily all the time, yeah. especially with the bullets going through there too. You can just get yourself just all confused. <laughs> no matter how much I've run it, like there will still be moments where you will just jump and the platform you were jumping on switches because you jumped and your brain just gets confused and you just fall into the void. <laughs> like, yeah, it's such an easy thing then. to do. There we go. That is our first finish when you'll see the center area. They'll, it'll glow white there for one of the rings now. And, uh, and we've also unlocked the, the race. Yep. 
That is what the um, skunk over there, Scarlet, uh, yeah, that's her sort of job here is she's only giving us power cells if we like race her robot mecha moles. So, so uh, right here, this level has a very, very tight cycle that I'm going to try to make. We'll see what happens. Um, incredibly tight. This is a very difficult level. Yeah, the the main cycle is right near the end. Mm -hmm. You want to make this windmill? There we go. Windmill, uh, making that windmill there is very important for this cycle. Oh and, no! Uh, that's uh, unfortunate. Well, first death it's, of the run. <laughs> Thankfully, there's a checkpoint there, but yeah, to go for that checkpoint, you have to you have to be pretty aggressive and and go for a jump and and try to make that there uh, yeah, across the open now. air. So yeah, there's but. you have to jump like weirdly around the corner off of this yeah. platform to get to this one, so you can jump to that far one out there. So now we got to take it chill at least a little bit. We're not rushing the cycles. Yeah, I gotta wait on this platform anyway. Yeah. This last one's a little bit of a, a gatekeeper for stuff, so. And there we go. Well, at least we gave it a try. Yeah, it's better to go for it. Mm -hmm. Why not? Still a gold medal, which means it was perfect. So. Of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's this entire area complete as well. That is the last level. Obviously, there's still the race to do, but we'll be kind of doing those in, in bulks when we do them, just to minimize moving around. Um, but yeah, so another power cell. I'm trying to remember how much that sets us at. If only there was a pop up that could tell us in a, just a second. It should be 14. Apparently, yeah. it's 14. So we are almost halfway to the power cells we need to get to the end of the game. Um, but we're going to go finish up uh, Coconut Island here, the last level. With this last level is interesting. <laughs> For, from like an ILing perspective, because there's normally a cutscene that plays at the beginning of these levels, but the the devs, very very responsive to the speedrunning community, added a option to turn like to just uh, remove cutscenes from the beginnings of the levels. The only really weird thing about that is since the timer only starts after the cutscene plays, these are on a different cycle then, and it's a much faster IL cycle. So the fast IL strat is to watch the cutscene because <laughs> the cycles are still moving during the cutscene. Also, they were very uh, nice to leave this little decoration on the side of the waterfall in there. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very sketchy going across those. There's not a lot of room to to do those dashes and get enough speed to dump, like to jump off of that. So, again, making it look easy, <laughs> but this is a game can be very rough when, yeah, when it wants to. Yeah, there's a lot of extra level on the side. You gotta go all the way to the right. You gotta put a, a beach ball in a hole. You gotta make your way back all the way left so you can get to the end. But instead, you can just climb on the decorations. All right. Okay, there's another, another one finished. Complete. And this will bring us into, I believe, Phuket number three which I need to be careful with mashing because you can accidentally break the cutscene here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you mash too fast here, it like overlaps things weirdly. And if you do it correctly, it'll look like this. If you do it incorrectly, if you mash too quickly, this whole section will just be like a black screen while this is going on. <laughs> and then you have to restart the uh, just the area to fix it, and then you have to sit through the cutscenes again. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. So just gotta be careful uh, not to mash too quick. Also, Phuket got a little cheeky and is no longer trying to steal power from the center. Now Phuket is trying to steal power from the side. <laughs> Where there are no cannons facing. Uh, but thankfully, Multi has the innovative power of being able to jump, so we can just go over here and just jump Just over. jump in. So, yeah. <laughs> there goes Multi. All right, so this is the third fight, and we're progressing a little bit more. We've got now the swapping tiles there, the blue and yellow ones. We've got some of the rolling platforms. So again, just adding in some of the extra stuff. Also, this uh, level has a silly little gimmick. Um, <laughs> he thinks he's very smart because 
you press all these buttons and you can tell he's like, he's not very upset about you pressing these buttons. And that's because he's rigged them to pop back up. However, he, he wasn't always, he, he wasn't the smartest about this and didn't realize that we could just hit them again. <laughs> and now Maybe he's very just, confused. <laughs> just put the buttons underneath the ship. <laughs> nah, you had to put them out here so Multi can get them. Ow, that was weird. I like got hit by the ball, but still got the ground pound hit. All right. <laughs> Yeah, if you, I've had it happen before I've gotten hit as I hit the last button and died, and then he's just to redo the entire thing. Yeah. Which for this would mean, like, going all the way through. There's yeah. Phuket again. You don't want to redo gonna... the Phuket fights if you can help it, because you tend to have to go through just all the buttons again. Mm -hmm. All the dialogue and stuff. And... Right here is a little bit of blind movement. Um, just have to move during the, the black so that we can get over here a little bit to mm -hmm. the final level over here in the ruins. And after we got the 15 power cells, a couple extra cannons popped up for us. So you got to kind of see those appear and those will be new areas we'll be going to. Those will be the additional cannons we need to, uh, to beat the game. Now we have this last area for the ruins. This wheel right here just taking hit there to keep zooming through. There's a nice little radish there that we're going to avoid. Um, Why would just you ever go get through the all these different... <laughs> Yeah, we don't need radishes. We're fine. These uh, brown rolling platforms there, you see the green ones are actively moving all the time. The brown ones will move depending on, like, if you're on the side of it, it'll start rolling that direction. Um, it's not super important during the ruin section where they're introduced, but later on, when they're reused, they'll uh, come into use a little bit more, so... Uh, we'll be seeing those in the future. Foreshadowing. <laughs> so coming up here will be the first time we're going to be doing some races against the Mecha Moles. We're going to be doing the first two races that we've unlocked before we get whisked away again. <laughs> yeah, these will be re-showings of levels we've already seen, but this time we need to go fast enough to beat the Mecha Moles. Spoiler alert. Headstrong is going to beat the moles. What? I, I don't know if I can beat these moles. They're very <laughs> tough. Them the spinning in circles is, in some places. <laughs> the funny thing for this level is the one they've chosen out of the four is this one, which uh, has the, the windmill jump again. So you enjoyed it last time. We get to do Good. it again and get it two for two. That is incredible. Nice and clean. Yeah, if you if you watch the Mecha Moles, they'll just like spin in circles in some places and <laughs> they get stuck on the wind, like they get stuck going around in circles yeah. on some of the stuff. It's great. I love them so much. Um, I think Ancient Temple, the race for that, might be a good time for a couple donations at least, if you have some. Yeah, certainly. Uh, thank you to Puzz for your twenty-five dollar donation. They say, been looking forward to AGDQ for months. Shouts out to the crew, keeping things running smooth year after year. Looking forward to some amazing runs and raising money for a great cause. Thank you, Puzz. Also $25 from Egg Salad Jr. Great name. They say, first time I get to watch GDQ live. So excited for all the awesome runs. It's really cool that folks are still finding GDQ live for the first time or finding GDQ in general for the first time. It's it's awesome. Yeah, or even just speedrunning too. There's so many people that have been getting into it more recently. Like it's just been growing so fast. It's a great source of community. Speaking of community, we also have a donation from T999UK here. $10 and they say good luck headstrong with the run from me and the rest of the community. Let's hope you can get the skip. Also, hi Bungie and Suki. <laughs> Thank you for the good luck. <laughs> All right, so coming up here is the first swamp level, which has a very uh, unique thing with these trees. <laughs> Multi doesn't Multi. like to be on solid <laughs> objects very well, so he's just gonna bounce off this tree <laughs> and this yeah. tree, and that'll bring us over here to the end of the level. This is a, a decently long level, and but it's a, an entire loop, and the tree just so happens to kind of span from one side of the loop to the other. 
So multi for these swamp levels gains the ability to to climb trees. So we uh, we use that to our advantage. <laughs> well, climb trees in quotes. <laughs> Bonk repeatedly his head on the tree until the tree gives way, which basically climbing, it's falling in style. Uh, yeah, that's the first level of Spooky Swamp. Spooky Swamp personally is one of, I think it's my favorite area, like first or second favorite area by far. I love the levels. Obviously the tree climbing is hilarious and big skips with that. Um, but just generally, it's, it's a lot of fun. Let's see how well Speed Glitch goes here. This level has so many variations depending on where Speed Glitch gets dropped at. <laughs> yeah, vanishing Bridges. Um, these kind of just fade in and out, uh, almost vanish, one might say, um, in and out. And once they're faded away, you can't, uh, you are not able to, to slide across them. Or you'll just fall straight through. So you have to time your jumps and time the route through. And there's some sketchy jumps you end up doing with that. And we're already done with that. Yeah, and knowing when, yeah, knowing when they fade in and out is really important because, especially with when you're doing it with speed glitch, because you never know exactly how fast you're gonna end up depending on how long you keep the speed glitch for. So you're gonna have to know like multiple different cycles of the of the bridges so you don't screw anything up. All right, so that is the second level of yeah, all the sw swamp. All the swamp levels are very short comparatively to most of the other levels. Now we're gonna go and collect some more keys. So this was a level, so this entire level is based around collecting keys. There there was a uh, tree skip actually that existed in the demo for this where you could skip all the keys by uh, using a tree to vault over the big door there. Unfortunately, actually, I'd say fortunately, honestly, because uh, we can't do that in the main version of the game. But the route going through this, just kind of cutting between each of the keys, going in and out of danger here, and just going as quickly as possible, kind of bouncing around like this, is just super cool to watch. Uh, there's so much going on. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting level, getting through the keys and whatnot. For sure. Though, if you want to try and find a new skip for these keys, that'd still be cool, too. <laughs> All right, so we have one more. Uh, who cat first? All right. Yeah, before we get to finish the swamp, we get to <laughs> have our final visit from Pooh Cat. So the overarching story with Pooh Cat is he's being sent here from an unknown land to steal our power. However, because of us defeating him the third time, he got fired from his job for stealing our power and is very upset. So instead of trying to steal our power now, he is going to try and destroy our tower. Yeah. <laughs> because, Things you know, we ruined his life. <laughs> he lost his job because of us. Yeah. And he, he, he's just upset. So right here, we're gonna reload the area. Um, just makes movement here a lot smoother. Yeah, it sends you a decent bit across the area and also uh, resets the cycle for the UFO moving around, which actually is important because you can only shoot from this cannon when the UFO is in a certain position. Right so if you there. get in at the wrong time, you uh, don't fire for a very long while. So yeah, this is the last Phuket fight brings everything he's got here. Fading bridges, the alternating platforms. It also has two blind jumps during a run, so we're gonna hope those go well. <laughs> yeah, there are invisible platforms there, which I don't know that we've really seen yet. Um, Good. We've skipped a lot of uh, Yeah, the, that's in the swamp the levels stuff. usually. But uh, yeah, you just have to go for it. Uh, you just have to know where they are and just like, be confident with it, which is, you know, this is pretty far in a run. Like, it's it's tough to just be like, I'm just gonna believe in myself and go for it. <laughs> so, Can both those went very well, though. So, just one more easy button to go to. There you go. And there's the final Poo Cat fight. As you can see, he's uh, very upset. 
And yeah. after this cutscene, he so there's not exactly fighting in this game. Like we didn't really <laughs> fight him, fight him, but he blows up here anyway. Um, so rip Pooh Cat. <laughs> He blows up and they just kind of ignore it. Oh, there's a floating yep. mug right there. Look at the bottom uh, right. Yep. <laughs> the floating mug. That's oh, gone now. If you didn't see it, uh, rewatch the VOD repeatedly <laughs> over and over again. But yeah, <laughs> Poo, Poo Cat's now dead, I guess. Um, just, yeah. So He's we, we made him lose existing. his job and then, <laughs> then he blew up. So right here is another tree climb. This one's kind of infamous for being a blind jump to the tree, as well as climbing up this tree. It's a bit of a pain. <laughs> and then jumping onto the vanishing bridge there that is on a specific cycle, and you have to jump out on a specific time, or else it will not be there, and you will just die and have to redo it. Yeah, so and you now... have to constantly watch the timer. Mm -hmm. And we're also past the checkpoint in this run, so if you fail after climbing up that tree, there is no checkpoint there. You have to restart from the beginning and do the entire skip again, but very quick. It's a two-minute level <laughs> we do <laughs> in 30 seconds, so um, the skips for for uh, Spooky Swamp are very, very good time savers for us. Doing this the normal way before, going through the more casual route, this was like a big like blocker in terms of like losing a bunch of time. Yeah. So. All right, so that is another full area done. Maintenance another race is unlocked, but we're not gonna be going to that yet. We're gonna leave the races now until the end. We're gonna do another reload here to bring ourselves this way so that we can make our way over to this final area that got unlocked, which is the desert. Those are just a few few interesting levels going on for for one reason or another. The first level is just it's just fast. pretty solid, <laughs> just pretty solid movement, really fast, avoiding. We have this these moving sands here, and the the cactus balls that are sliding on them. Really cool jump there up the sand ball, sand waterfall, whatever it is. Anyways. Yeah, whatever those are. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot more to that level, as you probably noticed, to the left and to the right, but you can just kind of make your way up the center of the level. Yeah, as shown by the 55 second gold medal there. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we could probably sit down and talk about like each of these levels and like the little stuff about it for like half an hour each, <laughs> so... I sorry that we're not touching on every little thing about it, but hopefully y'all are are getting a good feel for all the, the. There's a lot going on with DTZ, and I think it's just like you know, it's a this is a really nice kind of cozy run to to watch. It's definitely like uh, there's a lot to take into account and like be mindful of, and a lot to learn when you're learning it. But since it's IL based, it's actually pretty pretty easy to to kind of pick it up and go level by level and figure it out and, and kind of do stuff with that. So. Yeah, it's a very it's a very simple game to get into for speedrunning for sure. Like there's not it's not a whole lot with it to learn. Uh, some of the things can be a little tricky here and there, but it's definitely a really easy game to get into, I would say. Yeah, yeah lots of people that'll, that'll help you out with it. Also, this is another slide level. However, it's a bit unique compared to the others where doing dashes is actually quicker. Uh, for whatever reason, just kind of how the slope is, I guess. And there's also a little bit of a tricky jump there. <laughs> that is a choice. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, that's frightening. Uh, it's faster to go down the center, but that center jump is not okay for a marathon. <laughs> the other jump was fine from before, that one. Yes, that one's fine, but that, going down the center is not a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's very, very slightly faster. Um, but yeah. Even for like these levels, you, like, even these levels, I don't feel like there's a ton that you can optimize with them. It's still still cutting down a lot of time from the, the gold times that you, you'd be expected to get, so. So, uh, coming up here is probably the most infamous level in this game. Um, <laughs> there is, this, this next level is an auto-scroller. However, there is technically a skip for the auto-scroller. However, it has only been done by three people. Uh, 
uh, one time by me, one time by another runner, and a few times by someone else. And we have no idea how it works. <laughs> so basically our goal is to hit this button, dash into this cactus, and hope we launch into the air, which we did not. We're gonna try one more time. And no. <laughs> so basically what happens is it you jump into the cactus ball and it launches you high enough to get up this sand wall. Um, again, we don't really understand how the trick works. No clue. Only time I've ever personally got it was in the last marathon I did. It was the most random thing because I'd never gotten it before. And then of course, you know, marathon luck <laughs> would get it in a marathon. Sadly, not to be, I suppose, for GDQ, but at least we tried, right? For sure. Then, just kind of waiting out the sand here. So we can climb up. Yeah, with, with the skip, so you notice I got 59 seconds. With the skip off the first cactus, you can get in under 10 seconds, and off the second cactus, you can be under 20 seconds. <laughs> You can yeah. do it off of any cactus in the entire area. I just only did it off the first two for safety. And then just shout continue outs. after that. Shout out to Siamese Goose, who's gotten it a bunch of times on console somehow. Yeah, we have and, no idea. Uh, and they don't. And... They have no idea either. <laughs> <laughs> and shout outs to, to YP, who picked up the game, played through it for the first time, tried for half an hour, got the skip once, I don't believe has played the game since. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Which is... Very, very strong, uh, very strong display, so. <laughs> if anyone wants to figure out how that skip works and how to make it consistent, that would be awesome. Because yeah. that skip kind of is just, like, obnoxious. It's like there, yeah, it's, but not... It's a minute yeah. of time save waiting to happen consistently if yeah. someone figures it out. So there's still stuff to figure out this run. There's a lot of, like, little routing decisions and choices you can make with stuff, but there's also stuff like that still around, so it's kind of fun to play around with because of that. Also, that, Heights is also... Yeah. <laughs> that was the final level that we're going to be doing of like the canon levels we're going to be doing a bunch of races now um just kind of bang out a quick what is it four power cells six power cells how many do we have right now four <laughs> four yeah four because <laughs> all the races are fairly quick except for one one's a little long but um, it also I happens think... to be the only one that's different in the races for some yeah. reason. <laughs> There's some slight differences they have to make for them because the the robots don't deal well with certain mechanics like platforms that flip when you jump. Um, oh, on so top of they that, they, they made the cannons shoot faster on that level too. <laughs> oh, so there's true. a lot more cannons you have to deal with. Yeah, the cycle's a little bit different for that. Um, I think the races might be a good time for donations before we get into the final stretch of the run. So, if you have any incentives or donations to talk about while we're we're kind of re going through a few of these levels, might not be a bad thing. Yeah, certainly. I, I want to remind everyone we've been seeing a lot of two hundred and fifty dollars donations, and that's fantastic. All of those individuals are entered to win one of our three grand prizes this event, but also it's cumulative donations, right? So that means throughout the course of the event, if your multiple donations add up to 250, then you're also entered. So keep that in mind. And that being said, we have a donation for $50 from Klaus Live. They say, hey, Headstrong, I'm so happy I get to catch your run on AGDQ after not being able to catch your streams this past year. Keep on jumping to the gold. Also, I keep throwing my wallet at my screen and it keeps breaking. <laughs> I'm doing this wrong even after five years of watching you run. Thank you so much, Klaus. Uh, thank you for Raider, uh, Raider Monkey for your $25 donation. They say loving the back-to-back -back late night chill vibes runs. Good luck to Headstrong on the run and bullets on comms. Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, so that was the level that's slightly different for some reason they made that one a little harder than the rest <laughs> yeah so if i can get cannons. it here yeah <laughs> hey. you can uh, get a double text box there because why not if you mash really fast you can just 
get two, supposedly two power cells, but it doesn't actually count for two power cells, sadly. The first time I got that, I got so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, we can duplicate power cells. We have to do less stuff. You know, it's gonna be great. And then, but nope, it's just a visual thing, sadly. I unfortunately am not, not the best at glitch hunting. <laughs> so I take what I can get. Uh, so we're just we're just rushing through these. Like, there's not as much. Um, you don't have to watch the canon animation beforehand and stuff like that. So like, we're kind of going through these, and there's no Pukat because Pukat has uh, taken a vacation from messing with us. So um, sure, vacation, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just have vanishing bridges left, and then we'll have 30 power cells. Just having to time these out and sneak Oops. under there. That was really sketchy. That was spooky. You know, spooky swamps. Yeah, a little bit of spooky strats for spooky swamp. This final stretch. There we go. So this is going to be 30 power cells. So this is going to allow us to get to the the final end game area, the, the hardest stretch of gameplay, yeah, so I would they, say. Yeah, they decided to leave by far the hardest part of the run to the very end. Like, understandably, like, it's a platform and it gets progressively harder, but, like, it, like, ramps up a ton right here at the end. And yeah, the, is... the, the checkpoint, particularly for the beginning of this area, is uh, not the greatest. <laughs> Yeah, it is not forgiving at all, so it's going to be a lot of... Uh, there, I'll explain kind of some of the reasons for it so that Headstruck can focus in a little bit, because there there is a lot going on, but this is the King Rat's Lair that we're going to. Um, it's, it's one large level, but it's broken up to sections because of how large it is, so you can kind of bow out early and come back to it later on if you're struggling with it. Um, but yeah, so this is the first floor here. Um, this is the first time I get to see King Rat. Yeah, the Look actual villain. <laughs> Look at this guy. What a dude. All right, so we'll be seeing a lot of him for the rest of the run. So this is the first floor here. You'll see all the lava here. Um, and it is the main reason why this is so difficult is with all the platforming. If you mess up, you fall into that lava, and that is the, the only checkpoint we'll be getting for a very yeah, long so time. Yeah, so what we right just there. passed is the only checkpoint for a good chunk of this floor. Mm -hmm. But if you fall down in that lava, usually because we're going so fast, the lava is pretty low. So most of the time, when you fall in the lava, you're going to get hit more than once. And because we only have three hearts, because we are not giving Batty any of our money or carrots, I guess. Um, it gets pretty sketchy if you if any like jumps go awry here. That. Unfortunately, uh, with the spinning wheels there, it's really hard to catch the edge of that. So, well, now you this can is see where the checkpoint, checkpoint is. <laughs> so, unfortunately, unfortunately, but it's just challenging, especially when you're trying to like no fear go for it. Um, so yeah, getting back onto it here. So each of these floors kind of. Um, there we go. That's a good recovery there. Not taking two hearts of damage. Really useful for this. Um, but each of the floors is kind of showing off some of the stuff we've seen. So you'll see earlier I was showing some of the, the first areas, platforms, and now we're seeing the ruins with the rotating platforms. Like this one, we have to roll over to here. So each of these floors is going to focus in on some of the mechanics from the other areas. We have this one here. We have to avoid rolling it too much and rolling into these. Um, I believe we get to see a bit of Coconut Island here as well with the spinning pizza slices and the inflatables right here and the moving ones before that we skipped. Now this time there is no waterfalls to skip these with unfortunately. And this last little stretch, there we go. Awesome. So this is now when we finally get another checkpoint after all yeah. that. So. Sad we have um, the death there, but it, it it's happens. a completely understandable one. Like <laughs> it's so easy to die there. It's it's not reasonable at all to get stuck in kind of a loop there. If you fail once, sometimes that's it. So this is the first uh, King Rat fight we'll be doing. King Rat's fights are a lot simpler than Pukat's. There's one button. We need to press this one button in the center here. Um, 
But you can do a little bit of uh, clever platform because when we hit the checkpoint, we got our health back. Um, able to kind of use that to our advantage and launch ourselves over here. Um, and kind of, multi. uh oh. <laughs> multi decided to circle along <laughs> the edge there. That was very spooky, but it worked. So that is floor one done. Uh, but that is not the end of King Rat. No, he is too strong. So we will have to go higher to deal with him. All we're trying to do is like give him his mail basically right now. I mean, we're, the mail is to tell him to like stop. Yeah, yeah doing so he, we're trying to deliver him <laughs> a detention letter telling him to stop trying to take our, our power. And he has to listen to it because, you know, it's how things work. Um, yeah. Beating King Rat is literally just delivering him his mail. <laughs> also, right here, we are going to pull up the leaderboard. Um, not to just look at the leaderboard, though. Not is to, <laughs> is to, just so you can move a little bit quicker. However, that backfired a little bit. I went a little too far in the blind movement. <laughs> Yeah, during the cutscene, normally you do not have control over multi, but if you open the leaderboard and close it specifically Oops. just for... Uh, Speaking of, a, yeah, the earlier thing of a lapse in uh, the, the buttons. Yeah, it can happen. So, like I said, like this is like one of the more challenging parts of the run by far, so... Um, just gotta get back in a cycle. <laughs> yeah. But the uh, alternating platforms from... The ice area here, that'll be in the cannons as well. Uh, already at one HP, but you know what? If anyone can do it, that's trying nope. to do it. <laughs> this this floor I is being rude, soon. apparently. <laughs> uh, every Come time on, you floor. die. Yeah. Floor two definitely not none of the floors are easy. None of them are easy. It's like it is very reasonable to die to any of them, so. Um yeah, so every time you die, you lose a little bit of carrots, but it's it's basically not like it doesn't really matter. Hey, we Good finally old. made it! <laughs> Yay! Now we're into the uh, <laughs> desert area with all the cactuses and moving sand there and these lifting platforms that you can just uh, believe in yourself and jump there and it'll, it'll catch you. <laughs> and then this as well. It's always a spooky looking jump. Oh, uh, that too. There we go. So okay, we don't need that checkpoint there. there, because when we go to the top of the elevator, we get a checkpoint anyways. The only reason uh, to hit that checkpoint would be to to get the health before we do this fight. So, um, but yeah, this is the second King Rat fight. Um, this one uses yeah. the uh, changing platforms a bit more. However, yes. because we've got full health, assuming I don't make any more mistakes, um, <laughs> we will oh, do right. another fun little skip. Again, just kind of cutting around here, using an intentional hit off the lava here, going to one HP, and then just getting the button right there. Very good, very clean. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> so we are halfway through the uh, tower, though. Like the the first two floors are a lot longer than the last two, so we're already kind of chewing through this pretty quickly. So again. Going to move on to this next one uh, right here. We'll be doing the, the leaderboard glitch again as well. This um, one's a little more just for funsies, though, with the leaderboard it's, glitch. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a sketchy to... thing to do right here. Hey, there's me. I was there. <laughs> Look, I yeah, see, like, I didn't even really move far. <laughs> I didn't trust myself. At the invisible platforms and the fading bridges. Um, we got these swinging platforms as well, all from the spooky swamp. Uh, we have some cannons from... Oh, that's still spooky swamp. Sorry, I was thinking it's from the lava area. <laughs> these platforms this is and the rest area. of this are from the lava area. And you'll be like, what lava area? I don't remember a lava area. That was, that was the one cannon we avoided doing any stuff in just because all the levels are are decently long for it, so I'm just better than end up avoiding it. Yeah, there is a fast level in there. It's just the last <laughs> one. A, a single fast level. In fact, it's called going fast. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, this last elevator, you would think there'd be a, a fight with uh, King Rat here, but actually we just go straight to the top floor here and get our health back as we go across. And, and this is the... This 
This is the last of the section and it's probably the silliest with the leaderboard. Um, we're gonna leave the leaderboard up here while we talk to our king rat and then we can remove it and then while this is on its way up, do a jump. <laughs> do <you? laughs> and do some very awkward camera movement. <laughs> That's, it's not easy to control multi during cutscenes like that. It really messes with your perspective, just seeing it kind of fly on its own. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, just this final climb here to get to the top, avoiding all these cannons, keeping our health up, having our health um, be all the way up is really important for the end here. A nice little cut across there. But yeah, this is our final confrontation. Yeah, so King Rat here. Confrontate, confrontation. Um, again, we just want to give him mail. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> He's done the, the elaborate strategy of putting his mailbox on the top of a tower covered with lava to stop us renewing it. So and we got to deliver his mail and... Uh, instead he launches and then turns into fireworks. <laughs> we have a bad track record of turning our enemies into fireworks so far. But hey, we, 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 we delivered, delivered the mail. The mail. <laughs> See, look, there we go. We got our mailbox. We delivered him mail. There you go. Yeah, that is that is pretty much the end of the run. Once all this dialogue's done at the end, once we get back to the center area, um, that'll be it. So Headstrong, was there anything you wanted to jump in and, and say in terms of uh, shout outs before we get to the end there? I just mostly wanted to shout out the mammal community, speedrun community as a whole, and, the, and just the regular mammal community, because everyone's been incredibly wholesome and very nice people to, to talk to. And especially shout out to the dev team. This is, I believe, their very first game, and I hope we see more to come. Yes, thank you, thank you, Top of Games. Time. And, oh, that's kind. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for everyone involved with making this all speedrunning community plus. Thank you for. I would like to at least say thank you to all tech uh, staying up late um, and putting all the time into this and keeping everything running smoothly. Um, if you enjoyed this, we do have a Discord. Uh, for speedrunning for any questions if you want to post anything there uh, some resources there as well but yeah that's it for me any last words uh no that's it i hope everybody has a wonderful week hopefully everyone enjoys the rest of the gdq runs and yeah thanks for having us Okay, friends, while you spam your panic baskets in the chat, I'm gonna summon the power of Prime Gaming.
and remind everyone that if you have an Amazon Prime membership, you get a free subscription to use every month on Twitch. Can we outdo the panic with the Prime? Will the stream wake up and save us from this eternal struggle? Find out, well, now, while I read some more donations. Thank you to Poetics for the $50 donation. They say AGDQ is always a wonderful way to start off the year. Thanks to all the runners, the commentators, and the tech crew who make each event such a rousing success. Gotta go fast. Lawful Renegade donates $100 and says, thank you GDQ for hosting these events every year. I lost my aunt to cancer last summer and made it a goal to catch this year's event and donate. Let's beat cancer for all those who we've lost. Thank you, Lawful Renegade. Anonymous sends in a $100 donation with no comment. Thank you so much, Anonymous. Yeah, Panic Basket is a great emote, but we have a lot of primers. Monkey Puzzle donates $25 and says, Hey all, love watching this every year. Greetings from England. Thank you, Nicholas, for your $250 donation. They say, first time donating to GDQ. I have been watching since AGDQ 2013, and I have always looked forward to watching every year. Today is a special day, because one year ago, I proposed to the woman who is now my wife. We have been happily married for five months now, and I thought this would be a great way to commemorate the occasion. Donating to my favorite event. I hope everyone has a great AGDQ. Thank you, Nicholas. I hope you have a great AGDQ too. And we have another $250 donation from Shiny Charikarp, who says, I love this event and appreciate everything all of you do. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Once again, I'm Brutal Mellow. I've had a great time with you tonight. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we're back, you'll be joined by the wonderful, lovely, and ferocious Sand Shark as your next host. Thank you so much. Cool, thanks, see ya.
or evening. Welcome back, everyone, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 Online. My name is Sandshark, and it is my pleasure to be joining you as your host for the next few hours. Hope you're all having a fantastic day or afternoon or evening, whatever time it might be for you in the world. It's currently around 7.30 p.m. here in Sydney, Australia, but no matter what the time is, I could not be more excited to be joining you. Hope you're all having a fantastic time. Great to have you all here. Now, coming up very shortly, we're going to have a run of Antichamber 100% by Osborne. Just before we do that, though, let's read off a couple of quick donations. We have a anonymous... Sorry, I've just been advised we are still fixing some technical difficulties, so please bear with us, and we'll be back in right a moment, just a moment. We are back. Thank you all for bearing with us. As I said before, my name is Sandshark, and I'll be joining you for the next few runs. But just what we're getting set up for our run of Antichamber, we've got a few donations we can read off. We have an anonymous $50 donation, and they say, thanks to everyone involved for making this happen year after year. Thank you so much for your kind donation. We also have a $10 donation from You Sell Cat. Best way to start this new year. Good luck, all runners, and thanks for the amazing work all working for DDQ. And for last, let's go Twitch chat. You know what, I agree. Thank you very much for your generous donation. We also have a $20 donation from Jono. Thanks for doing a run of this adorable game. Great commentary, and I am digging the multitude of speedy threats. And that's dedicated towards the previous run of Male Mole. Thank you very much for that donation. That was an incredible speed run by Headstrong there. We also have a $20 donation from Sleeping Puppy. 
So happy that GDQ is back to bring more joy and awesomeness to the world. I have to give a special shout out to Sam, my partner in life, love, and late night speedrun memes. Have a great week, everyone. We have a $5 donation from Doc Reactions. Loving the comfy runs on my sofa with best mate Rufus the Greyhound. Sending love to all the AGDQ team from New Zealand. Doc, thank you so much. And say hi to your Greyhound for me. We also have a $25 donation here from Aristofan. AGDQ is full of orbs. Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania is full of orbs. We must unlock this bonus game for the orbs. And actually, let's check out on how that incentive is going there for the bonus game. The Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania, that'll be happening tomorrow. We're currently at around almost $18,000 out of the $80,000 to unlock the bonus game. Look. We all like some Super Monkey Ball action, so if you want to see that happen, be sure to keep those donations rolling in for that incentive. <laughs> 